What's up, website creators? All right, I gotta ask you, have you ever built a website and designed one? And like, this one is like one of those special ones, one of those ones that just came out super dope. Like, it is like really nice. This is like one for the portfolio. You're really proud of it. It came out really well. Uh, you show it to your design community. You get all kinds of positive feedback. You're excited about it. Like, it's something you're really proud about. And you're excited to show the client. But when you show the client, they come back with a totally different response than what you were expecting. They'll come back with something like, maybe like, you know, this isn't what we were looking for. We we're expecting something different. Can you redo this? Or they might come back at you with a super long list of revisions, which basically is just undoing all the work that you've done. Well, that's the reason why we use Stylescapes. And what a Stylescape is, it's, it's sort of like a mood board, but it's much more than that. It's like a layout, like a landscape layout, and it's filled with brand assets and identities from the client, as well as a bunch of different uh, imagery and design elements. And they're all put together. And the reason why we use these is design is subjective. What looks good to us might not look good to someone else or what looks good to them and looks not appealing to us they might really like. And that's what we need to figure out before we even start the design. And a stylescape will allow us to find exactly what the client likes and what they don't like. And something to keep in mind too. Sometimes you're dealing with clients and they run, they might have more opinions. They might have more than one person. Cause it's one thing when you got one person giving you their feedback and giving you their opinion and their vision of good design for them. But what happens when you got like three, four, five, even 10 decision makers inside the business? Well, we wanna get all that feedback. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the formula to building, the formula that I use and I've been using and that's been working very well. I'm gonna show you what it is, what they look like, how to put one together, how they work. I'm going to show you exactly what Stylescapes are. If you're brand new to Stylescapes, this is a good place to start right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at some Stylescapes. All right. So this here, this is a Stylescape that we created for one of our last projects right here. I put this together. Now you see there's a lot of things going on over here. It's actually three stylescapes right here so let me go ahead and just show you one at a time so i don't want to overwhelm with all of them together so here it is this is a stylescape right here and you can see it is like a long landscape landscape size to it now here is the formula that we're going to use i'm going to show you the formula i'm going to show you how the formula works inside the stylescape the first one is we always want to start with the client's target customer or user let's go back over here you can see that's why this person is here this is our target customer or their user and also let's keep in mind before that i before i built this stylescape. I had the in-depth conversation with the client. I did the discovery and I found out who their users are. I found out who their target market is. And we actually did like user personas, uh, uh, exercises because for me, I need to know who I'm making this for. And the client needs to know who are we making this for? So we want to keep the focus on the target customer or target user. And we always put them on the far left because the way the human brain works is we always start on the left and we get our information from the left and then we go right. So the most important things always start at the left. Next section, let's go back to the formula. So the next, next section we want to put in there, we want to put the client's logo and brand colors. We want to identify the client. So right here, we got their, their uh, logo right here. We got their brand colors. Then we also want to put words that describe the client's brand. Let's go back over here. You can see it's kind of small. Let me open it up. But we got right here uh, three brand identity words that describe the brand. And these are words that I got from our discovery call. For this one, it's innovative, scientific, premium. They kept mentioning these words over and over inside our call. All right, back to the formula. 
So we want to look at typography and style. All right, so we got the typography right here. Uh, and this typography, this is actually coming from the client. So the client came up with this typography and I put it in there. And you're gonna see we skipped a little something. See, I put a little image, well not little, this is a big one. Uh, for this one, we were lucky because the client already had photo shoots done of their products and we had images. So we added an image right inside the middle to, uh, uh, but we wanna get their colors. You see how the colors reflect with everything. And then we got the client's images. All right, for the next one. We kind of reversed it a little bit, so it could have gone either way. I could have put the typography on this side, the image on that side, but it gave balance, so I just switched it around. Like I said, as long as you have these elements on there, you're gonna be okay. They don't have to be perfect. The only one that has to be that I would not change is gonna be the, the target user. That's the only one I would not change. And probably the logo and colors too. I would keep those, these on the far left, most definitely. All right, back to the formula. More imagery, we wanna pull more images out. And then we also wanna throw some web design images as well. So you can see here, they said they liked words like scientific, and uh, you know they're talking about clean nature, so that's why I threw this image there. It's a sciencey type of image. Uh, same thing here, just another random image. I put another image here of their target user right here. So I want to still keep the focus on their target user or target customer, and then I throw in a couple images of different web designs, different web design styles. And then on the far left over here, this like jungle in the background, I, I again, I just wanna put big images there, uh, like backgrounds and textures, and I just want to gauge what the client likes. So that's the first one. Let me go run you through the second one now. So here's the second one. Again, we start off on the far left with the target user. And then I added the other two. And real quick, let me show you this. I did build this before, hand before when we did our call. When we did our call, I created three of their customers. So we already got three customers here because these are the focus for it. So I started off and I put their target customer here, but I did something a little bit different. You know, here we use Dan, we use the man, the guy. So we use the male customer right here. Here we started with the female customer. Then I put the other two there as well. Then we got the the, the logo, just made it a bit different. We made this one black uh, and took out the colors on it. We put in three more of the words, but these ones were different words because they used, they used quite a few words to describe themselves. I wrote them down, but I wrote down the highlights, the ones they kept talking about. This one was confident, honest, and high quality. And then we got the brand colors here. And I just picked another image. I got I got this like out of Unsplash. I just found an image that matched their colors. And then I got another image of their product right here as well. And then we did the typography. And you can see the typography is quite different from the first one. See, I wanna mix it up. I wanna see what they like. You know, so here's more of a straightforward, clean uh, sans serif. And then we got more of a serif font over here. Uh, so it's more of a, you know, I also changed the fonts over here. So we put the serif because it's more premium. I wanna get more of a premium fill. Also, if you can see, I put a little bit of a design element here, a little bit of a box shadow and try to get that material design. Uh, for that style here i threw in like a big text right here innovation with like uh jungle masking in the background then i put in here a graphic and a graphic illustration i want to see what they think about illustrations as well as icons i threw in some icons i want to see what they think about these icons and then i end it with a couple web design uh, well, only one web design image right here, some more of the products, and then a completely different type of background image right over here, which is like a black and white of Bangkok, of the city. And that's where these clients are from. So that's why I chose that city. So that is Stylescape number two.
let me run through stylescape number three because here we do something completely different this one is going to look way different and again we start off with with dan our client's target customer right here we got the brand colors we got the uh the logo we got the brand identity right over here uh the, the words that describe them again pictures of bangkok this one we went with the darker style i wanted to see what they felt about this dark style this style with like right here it says innovation like big bold outline letters I, i'm just throwing different web design elements at them that's all i'm doing right here the typography very similar uh but a little bit more bolder on the titles their products more imagery right here more design elements like i put in a testimonial and then another web design mock-up right here and i get these from dribble i go on dribble and i find websites that are going to be similar to our client sites so and i just go ahead and screenshot it put it in there and let the client you know let us know what they think and then more images right here all right so that was a lot right there. That was a lot to process. Uh, that was a lot to put in there. Let me explain now why I choose three. First off, three is a magic number. Three is is like a universal number. So always, I always do three stylescapes. But there's there's a method to these three right here. It's part of the formula. The first one here on the top, number one. What I did here and what I always do is that one comes from the example websites the client gives me. You know, uh, before I used to always, I didn't do style skates before, I used to go off of the example websites the clients gave me, but I never really understood. Sometimes they could articulate what they liked and what they don't like, but that wasn't always the case. There's a lot of times a client would just say, I like this, I like this, I like this, and they would send them. But what do they like about it? What don't they like about it? So with this one, I use the first stylescape and I take elements out of it. And I wanna to try to see what they like and don't like. So this first one, this is what I call the safe stylescape. This one is safe right here because these are all elements out of the example websites that they gave. Number two now, number two, this one here, this is my style scape. This is what I'm envisioning. This is like the elements that I could see using on their website based on my design preferences and on my experience as a web designer. So number two is all me. Number one is the client. Number two, that's me right there. Then number three, number three is where we go completely different. We go out the box we do something wild we do something that is just that is just out there that's not my that isn't something safe for me isn't safe for the client but it's just bold it's something completely different and we use all three of them so this way now the client could go through and they could say i like this i don't like this we really love this like for this project right here uh i mean we went through this and the clients went through this in detail it was brilliant it was awesome even the big bold one down here like that that line text with the innovation they loved it and we actually used that style on their website you know uh when we did this project for the client the the response was awesome from the client it was awesome it's the best when you create a design and you send it to the client and they love it and they come back that's just that's the good feeling it doesn't feel it's hard it is hard when a client comes back to you and says that's not what we're looking for we don't really like that because that hurts our pride we're creatives you know i'm sure many of you out there watching this you, you you're, you're sensitive like me I, I you gotta be i know there's many sensitive creatives out there and when someone says they don't like our design work it's just like you know that pride gets hurt the defensive mechanism kicks in you don't know design and, you, and then you're stuck trying to convince the client this is good and that's not the way to go you know using a stylescape though when you use a stylescape you can find out exactly what does the client like and what won't they like you can save both of yourselves a whole lot of time and you could give a whole 
just a much better experience. And if you're new to design and worried about using a, a design tool like Figma, Adobe XD or Sketch, don't worry about it. This is a really good opportunity to get started because it's not complicated. This right here, we're not doing a bunch of complicated stuff. We're basically putting elements together, but in a way that has a formula and a method behind it. And the formula is quite a simple one to do. You can start off very easy. And of course, as time goes, your design skills improve, then you could go ahead and, you know, you can make these a whole lot more creative and put more into it. I like to keep it simple. Most of my time is going to go into designing the mock-up. So I like to keep this part very simple. I like to build it just to get the results and the feedback from clients. I hope this helps out. I hope this can help your design process. It has dramatically improved my design process over here. Uh, the feedback I get from clients now is way different now, ever since I started implementing Stylescapes and it gets them more involved. It, it's just been a great transition. I won't even touch a project anymore without doing these Stylescapes because the results are there. The, the feedback that we get is there. Uh, the evidence has just shown me that this improves the design process and the experience for myself and our clients uh, just so much more that I don't think I could ever go back. So this is really easy to put together to get started. Make sure to subscribe. Subscribe. That way you can get notified because we do have another video coming out, part two of this. And on part two, I'm going to take you step by step on building a stylescape as I'm going to build one for an upcoming project that we're doing. So that way you can follow along step by step and just get more of a personalized uh, 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 lesson on it. And then on the third video that we put out, that one's I'm going to show you how to present your stylescapes to clients so that way you could get the most out of the feedback that's it for tonight i really hope this helps out please like and subscribe we could use all the help for a new channel we appreciate the support and we'll be back soon all right thank you